welcome to this update on the Yarslow Model Railway and I have trains running which is rather appropriate because this video is going to be a little bit different the last few videos have been very much about I've done this and I've done that and this is where I am with certain projects but there's only so many of those sort of videos that I can make and make them sound interesting. I'll be honest with you, I'm getting a bit bored making videos that just say I've done this and I've done that. And I'm sure you're getting bored watching them. So what I'm going to do is to make this video themed on operation. Now operation seems to fall into three big categories with regard to this layout for me and that is the what, the why and the how. Well as far as the what is concerned that's quite straightforward. What I'm trying to do is to produce a layout that represents a bit of North Lincolnshire and South Yorkshire in that transition period between steam and diesel. The story sightings that you see here contain about 50 trains or will contain about 50 trains that represent that era and that area. All of the trains here are based on photographs that I've seen of trains operating in the area I'm interested in and during the period I'm interested in. The classic one I guess is the WD with the Bolsters train that you saw earlier based on a photograph taken at Lincoln Central. So that's the what and to a certain extent the why of the trains and if you go to photographic evidence and you look at your magazines, libraries, the internet, whatever, it's quite easy to find out how you do that because you simply examine the sort of trains that you want to run. But the what, why and how also extends to the modelling side of things. What am I modelling? Well I'm modelling 12 volt DC. I use ordinary DC controllers. I have power going to the track, 12 volt DC, I have 16 volt AC point motors driven through CDUs and I have lots of lovely switches and buttons to select what I want. Why do I do it that way? Well I've been modelling for about 40 years and I've seen the arrival of Z gauge, I've seen the arrival of DCC in that period, but I've kind of kept with what I know and what I understand. All of my projects are one man bands, I've got to make it work, I've got to mend it if it doesn't work, and I've, that means I've got to understand it. So, as far as I'm concerned, keeping it as simple as possible is a benefit. Now looking at the wiring in front of you, you're going to say to me, that's not simple, but I understand it, so it is, as far as I'm concerned, it's simple. So that's the what, and the why, the why is because I've got a fleet of 50, 60 engines, some of which are a little old, and I'm not really disposed to start putting chips in them and turning digital. I so get the digital thing and if I was starting from scratch now, although I wouldn't be building a layout this size clearly, if I was starting from scratch now or talking to some of the younger members of the Model Railway Club I go to, I would be saying to them DCC digital is the way forward, it's the future, don't start with analogue.
The how is quite simple, there's an awful lot of DCC stuff around. Wiring circuits are relatively straightforward to understand. You feed power at one end, it goes through various switches and devices, it does something and comes out the other end. And as long as you've got a circuit, it'll work. And you can multiply that ad finitum. On a practical level, that means that I use miniature or sub-miniature switches. I use 16 strand 0.2 mil wire. I use color codes, different things do different things. So here, orange relates to the middle junction. Black relates to CDU. The power feeds are color coded. This is for the loco yard at Trinity Square. Uh, storage so this is going to be yellow you can see yellow prevails in the wiring here and also down here this is a yellow feed as well on the main line the down is blue the up is red stripes the power for the controllers comes in at 16 volt AC the power for the CDUs 16 volt AC and it's nothing better and simpler than using the Hornby 16 volt AC transformers. There's also one over there that's pushing out 12 volt AC, sorry, 12 volt DC, that runs my LEDs. If I select a track, I get two green lights that tell me it's set. If I unset it, I get the tracks at the end here, the lights at the end here. And if I change the point on here that affects the storage siding exit from Trinity Square, I get a red light that warns me I've done that. Simple circuits, isolators, on off switches. Point motors, momentaries on and offs. Simple equipment. There's a lot of it. This is just a storage area for Trinity Square, and for most people, this is a whole layout. So there's a lot of the equipment, but it's all very simple. This looks like a right uh, rat's nest of wiring and very complicated, but it's actually all very simple. It's just lots of circuits fed to buttons, lights and switches. It's not difficult. And I don't want it to be difficult. I use live frog points. Modified points bonded. Wire to the frog. A switch in the point motor means that when I change the points the polarity of the frog changes as well. Again it's a simple thing to do. There's a lot of it. There's a hundred sets of points on this layout, so it's a big layout, but it's all very simple. So what are the sections of the layout and how do I work out what controls what? Well to decide which controller operates which piece of track we use this piece of loveliness. You may have seen a photograph of this or I may have, made, may have made reference to this in a previous video. This is the master cab control panel. It's 3mm metal plate which has been overprinted by my local graphic designers and this in effect is the hub of the system to determine who controls what. Now the control panel itself comprises 14 rotary switches, 14 section switches 
and a stop button or panic button just in case something goes rather pear shaped. I'll let the trains run in front of this because it doesn't matter, it's just nice to see some trains running. So how does it work? Well the layout as you've just seen is divided up into 14 sections. Up 1, 2, 3, down 1, 2, 3, Trinity Square, Trinity Square Yard, Trinity Square Storage, Yarslow Yard, Yarslow Permanent Way, Storage Loco Area, Branch and Branch Loco. And you can see that those 14 names are repeated on the panel and each of them has a rotary switch and a stop button. So let's say I want to run a train, as I am running a train at the moment, on the down line using controller E. So what I need to do is to switch down one, down two and down three, in other words the whole of the down line, onto E. And having done that, I then need to activate it. Now if I turn control to E, I will have complete control of the down line. Now having run that train, let's say I then have a train sitting in the loop at Yarslow and I want to run a train from Yarslow Yard, in effect, because that's what controls the loop, out onto the down line using controller A. But the first thing I need to do is to disengage controller E. By turning off the downline switches, I can now do whatever I like with the rotaries and I'm not going to interfere with anything. So let me select downline for controller A. I also need Yarslow Yard on A. So now I have Yarslow Yard on A plus the down line, the whole of the down line, all on A. And if I turn controller A, I'll run a train. When I've exited the yard, I can turn that section off. And that's then available to somebody else. Now you'll see already that Yarslow Permanent Way is on D. Storage Loco Area and Trinity Square Storage are both on F. Trinity Square Yard and Trinity Square are on J, although that controller technically doesn't exist at the moment. And the upline is being run on B. It's a simple system, rotary switches, to make sure that I don't get any conflict. The track is fed to the switch and the switch selects the controller. It's therefore impossible to have one controller interfering with a section controlled by somebody else. Now of course you can make a bit of a rick of it. If I were to put down two onto B when the engine runs from down one onto down two, it's going to get a bit somewhat confused. But at the end of the day, these systems are only as good as the interface between the electronics and the soft squidgy thing, i.e. the human that's working them. Human error comes into everything. I've just got to be careful. Now obviously this panel isn't wired up yet, it's just sitting here and I've only just finished fitting all the knobs and switches and there's a lot of wiring to do. I've got to wire each of the um, pins on the rotary switches for argument's sake for controller A. I've got to wire them all together and then wire that back to some link to controller A and then B and C and so on. The input into the rotary switch that comes into the centre of the switch will be wired through the on-off switch at the top so I get that isolator functionality.
the layout operates on what's called common control. Uh, sorry, common return. That means that all of the returns for all of the controllers and all of the returns for all of the sections are wired together. And that common return is going to be wired, obviously, through all of the panels, through the Yarslow permanent way panel, through the storage siding panel, and through this panel here. And as it comes through the panel, it's going to be wired through a switch. The stop switch. If I turn this switch off, I break common return for every section and every controller, and the whole layout will come to a grinding stop. The control panel in the storage sidings, one for the upline, one for the down, although they're not exclusively, as I will explain in a moment, up and down. This is E and F, and then the walkabout is G. This walkabout deals with the Trinity Square storage sidings, which are these lines on the inside here, and actually separate from the main storage over there. It means that if I select let me just select some points here for you. So if I do that and that, oh sorry, that, and I turn controller G, you'll see that I get a train comes out with this V1. Now that could be going off to Trinity Square, the engine in, on its own could be going off to the Loco Yard, which of course will be here but hasn't been laid yet. It just gives me local control. Now apart from the storage sidings controllers, there are control panels around the layout. This one is for the permanent way yard at Yarslow. Now you may remember on the last video that it was over there in the end of the bridge. And I've decided to move it and I'm going to put it here, I've put it here with a static controller rather than a walkabout and I've now properly mounted these two um, point motors and in that hole in the top there is going to be an on off switch, a, a, a stop switch which I'll talk about in a moment. It means that an operator now can stand here and he can do some shunting with these three sidings and these points totally independent of whatever else is going on in the layout and you'll notice that this is controller D. Middle junction which is the uh, really the interchange between the two storage areas the main line and Trinity Square does have a panel this is going to be laminated and presented onto here but there's no controller here there's no need for anybody standing at Middle Junction to actually uh, work any trains. They're simply routing trains as per the diagram. This, as is rather obvious, is the panel at Yarslow. These are the point uh, control levers that you saw me put in in the previous video, all now fixed down and working perfectly. So everything works as it should. And this is now the control panel, and this is going to be in a building as well. You heard me earlier saying that I was going to put some kind of warehousey thing around this to hide it, but it's going to be another piece up this end. And here we have controllers A, B, and C. Now A and B are designed really for local control of the main line, and C is going to be the controller that I use for operating the yard at Yarslow. So if for argument's sake 
I activate this, you can see my B1 moves and I can shunt and do all sorts of things that I want to do here in the Yarslow yard. And that extends to these two sidings or three sidings here. This is actually Yarzo's goods yard where this engineering train is sitting. It extends across to the brake van siding and extends down here. You'll realise that in the absence of some storage cartridges there are trains parked everywhere. This is the loop line. This is under yard control. Uh, these are the exchange sidings for the branch. So these are under yard control. This one isn't. There is a double brake here which puts this siding under the control of the permanent way yard and you'll notice or you'll, you'll know from the previous video that this track leads all the way around here into the permanent way yard and this, is, this acts as the head shunt. So this controller we've just been looking at here I can run a train all the way around through this loop line as long as I don't go past that. And the obvious thing to do is to put a signal there to say you can't do that. There may also be a limit of shunt sign there. The master cap control panel is going to be mounted probably in this corner. So if I'm sitting at my desk, which is broadly where I'm standing now holding the camera, I'm just over an arm's length away from that panel and more importantly that panic stop button. If I'm the other side of the layout and I'm working over here either at the storage sidings or what will become the branch down here, I've got a stop button here. This is the same panic button that's wired into the common returns. If I'm, wire, if I'm working up this end of the layout, either shunting in Yarslow Yard or in the permanent way yard or I'm doing something in the storage sidings or with a cartridge, very one of the cartridge bay is going to be here, this switch here in this panel is also going to be a stop switch. So the three areas of the layout that I'm likely to be working this end, that corner or that corner, I've got a panic button that I can kill the whole layout. So if I get a derailment or I get something happening that shouldn't happen, it's possible to kill the layout. Now there's a lot of trains stored here and rather than have loads and loads of tracks I've got tracks which are stacked. That means that there are two trains on each siding. In fact in some sidings three. And you can see that if you're very careful here's the front of one train and here's the back of another. So you can actually store trains one behind the other without fear of having a crash and there's two parts of that. Firstly these locomotives sit on isolator sections so they get to a certain point and then they stop because they're on an isolator section and then, it, and then the trains in front of them are of such a length that they don't overhang those isolator sections and therefore you get a crash. Now there's only a two inch gap here and you might think oh that's a bit, that's a bit sharp but extensive testing which takes the form of having a bit of a running session and therefore some fun, proves that I can get a train of this number of wagons or this number of coaches. And before I started, it was all extremely carefully measured anyway, because I didn't want lots of short trains. There are 25 wagons, I think, in the longest of the freights, and there are eight coaches in the longest of the passenger trains. So if I want to take out a train, let's say I'm going to take out a down train from track 2. So at the moment you can see I've got the main line lights. If I select track 2, 
you can see I get two lights. That means that the points have changed, the relays have fired and the frog polarities have all changed. Set the controller to the power setting that I want and I press this button to make a circuit. And the train on track 2 goes. Now I've got to advance the one behind it now so if I press this you'll see that the one behind it moves up and when it gets that isolator section at the other end it'll stop. There you go and now I can reset the main line. I've got my two main line lights and if I look out onto the layout I see that the train that I have just released is now going round the layout. There it is. Over there. Now I've had a number of comments both through the channel and through the forum that I belong to and my railway club of people saying you get an awful lot done. Well this is why. I carry to-do lists. I've always been a to-do list sort of person. So this is my list of what I want to get done in November. So I wanted to wire the crossover onto the down main to get that uh, red LED working. Uh, I wanted to finish off laying the track for Trinity Square Approach, lay controllers ABC for Yarslow etc etc etc. There's a few things here in italics which I was hoping to do if I had time but this was my list of wanted to do for November. And this is where I am at the moment. The crossover has been laid as I showed earlier in the video. I've laid the track and points for Trinity Square. Uh, I've done all the hot gluing. The controllers for yards lower in. Um, I've moved that permanent way uh, controller that we mentioned earlier. I've had a bit of a tidy up under the boards. You can see all that now is uber tidy. It wasn't tidy before. It was a right mess. I've done that because I'm now beginning to store all of my wagons into plastic boxes instead of that great big pile of cardboard boxes that you might remember at the end. That has freed up the magazines and the books so that this is now making more sense for me here. There's still a few things to do. The master cab control panel wiring is the next big job. I need to get that sorted out and that's that's something that's going to take me a little bit of while. The panic switch installation, we've just been talking about that. We're going to make some cartridges. A lot of merit in constructing the cartridges and obviously more testing and more things to do. Uh, move the Yaso controller. Um, now that the slowdown zones I mentioned earlier, I might take those out. The light fittings and the framework, uh, the uh, window reveal. This is a job that I've threatened to get around to for yonks. Nothing to do with the railway. It's just purely tidy. But you can see that's not very tidy in there. I need to just fit a small reveal. The lighting is a bit more interesting. If I look down the shed here, you can see that I've got these lovely LEDs, but they do have light and dark patches. You can see it's light here, and it's dark there, and it's light there. And I've mentioned this before. And one of the reasons is that the the LEDs are angled. If I stand here, you can see that the, the, they're angled off the roof, away from the layout. And what I'm going to do is to remount them but I'm going to mount them and twist them so that rather than sitting in this plane they sit more in this plane. I need to put some blocks up so that the light shines not here but rather there. I still think I might get some shadows so what I'm going to do also is to, you see I've got three down here, I'm going to fit a fourth one. I'm going to put, the next one is going to be mounted here one, two, three, and then there'll be another one on the next three buttons. So there'll be a continuous line. It's not a problem in the story sidings. There's only three that side, and that's fine. I don't need fine detail, but I don't want light and dark. And I'm also going to have a little think about what happens with Trinity Square, because if I stand at the end of Trinity Square, you'll see going down here, this is quite light here. It does get a little darker there. But because the lights are further away here, further up in the ceiling, 
are not so close to the baseball, the light has more time to diffuse and so I don't think I'm going to need a third one down here. I have fitted a light up here over the permanent way yard because that was quite gloomy. So one of my little jobs to do is to sort those lights out. Nothing to do with operation but it's something to do with what's going on with the layout. Well that's about me done for this update. So I'm just looking back at where this all started. 1972 railway modeler. I've been collecting the railway modeler ever since. I have every edition from then right up to the current one here in December 2021. From very humble beginnings of a trying train set, which is what I had when I first started in 1972, I've ended up with a 340 square foot shed and a mega layout which is giving me great fun, a few headaches but is going to be provide for me tremendous fun as I go through my hopefully long retirement. I'm glad that over a thousand of you have subscribed to join me. I am genuinely touched that that number of people are interested in what I'm doing and my humble little layout. Yes, it's big, but at the end of the day, it's just little old me being a bit of a megalomaniac. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for uh, following on. Please leave a comment, say something funny, witty. If you want to be critical, be critical. Don't be nasty. If you want to be critical, be critical. I haven't got a problem. I'm not precious about anything I do. A number of people have said to me, why haven't you done this? Why haven't you done that? Well, I've got my reasons. There's a number of you who don't like some of the things I do. Um, there was a comment the other day saying, a pity I'm using CDUs and point motors because you get the sniper effect. So I get when the points change. I get that. I so get the idea of tortoise point motors and slow action motors and all the rest of it and how they could be better. Uh, I have over a hundred sets of points and I had a load of point motors in store. I had a load of CDUs. I know how they work. They're kind of, I kind of like them. So that's, you know, if that's what you want to do, fine. I'm not going to tell you what to do. Let's all do our own thing. Railway modelling is one of those hobbies that has this great advantage that whatever we do, we're all right, aren't we? Every one of us is correct and right. Rule one will always apply. It's my train set. I do what I like. But it's nice to hear what other people think. So do leave me a comment. And uh, if you're new to the channel, do subscribe. Do have a look at the old videos. I get lots of questions about how big is the shed. What do you do with this? And how do you model that? Most of the things I've covered, and most of it's in the previous video. So if you get a rainy afternoon or you're bored, just go through and have a look at some of those old videos. They might raise a smile. By Christmas, which is only a few weeks away now, I want this central peninsula in. I want some track laid, and it'd be lovely to be able to show you what Trinity Square and the branch is going to look like. I look forward to that. I look forward to seeing you again. In the meantime, stay safe. I'll see you soon.